Hello, I am here to bring you the next chapter of Kid Artists. Um, and in case you're wondering why I appear to be sitting on the floor, and this is the back of my couch, is because I am sitting, getting some sun rays here uh, from the big glass door. But also, my motivational practice today is to paint my door black. It was a sort of red color. I see a red door and I want to paint it black. Yeah, that's my mood now. So anyway, um, all right, I'm trying to do this without getting too much glare. Maybe if I focus, I'm not even bothered to shower today. I'm still in my PJs, so whatever. If you can't see me, you can't see me. Um, maybe, yeah, I'll turn it this way. That's glare. Here we go. Okay, now that we've established that. All right, today is our dear friend, Georgia O'Keefe, who was born to be a rebel. Born a rebel. I'm a rebel, Dottie. A loner. Or is it I'm a loner, Dottie, a rebel? Can you put that way? Thank you, Pee Wee Herman. All right. Um, All right. Known for her nearly abstract paintings of flowers, animal skulls, and desert landscapes, Georgia O'Keeffe had a unique way of looking at the world. In fact, everything about her was completely original. From the way she dressed to the way she painted, she made it cool to be unconventional. Right on, Georgia. From the time I was small, Georgia O'Keeffe once said, I was always doing things people don't do. Indeed, as a little girl, Georgia prided herself on being different from other kids. If my sisters wore their hair braided, I wouldn't wear mine braided, she recalled. If they wore ribbons, I wouldn't. Georgia was always challenging her sisters to be bolder and braver. The dairy farm where they lived in rural Wisconsin offered plenty of opportunities for mischief. One time, Georgia snuck her sisters into the barnyard, a place the girls were not allowed to go. They tiptoed inside the cow pen, where she dared them to stick their hands inside a cow's mouth to feel the tongue. Ugh. Naturally, Georgia had no fear of doing so herself. Years later, Licking Cow became the subject of one of her paintings. <laughs> Didn't know that. She says, this kid tastes awful. I ain't scared of nothing. This rebellious streak put Georgia on a collision course with her stern Aunt Jenny, who enforced all the rules in the O'Keefe household. Aunt Jenny was constantly punishing Georgia for misbehaving. It's no wonder that Georgia once called her the headache of my life. <laughs> to make matters worse, Aunt Jenny was constantly praising Georgia's older brother, Francis, so Georgia decided to be better than Francis at everything. She outstudied, outraced, and outclimbed him every chance she got, but no one in her family ever noticed. Ooh, ah, check it out. How many cow tongues do I have to grab to get some respect around here? <laughs> Georgia. Georgia soon learned that being the black sheep in the family had its advantages. With Francis getting so much attention from the grown-ups, Georgia was free to sneak off and explore outdoors. She'd spend hours sitting under the apple trees on her farm, or gazing up at the clouds, or carefully examining the petals of brightly colored wildflowers. One time, she even ate dirt just to find out what it tasted like. <laughs> There's a picture of her saying, it's actually not too bad. Um, I've heard that people with iron deficiencies kind of crave dirt to get the iron out of the dirt. I used to work with a lady back in Georgia who um, conf confessed her dirt eating love because of her iron deficiency. Uh, anyway, that's funny to read about Georgia's interest as a little girl about drawing flowers and um, looking up at the clouds as that's a lot of her subject matter as we know. Georgia loved nature. But at first she had no way to express how the natural world made her feel until she learned to draw. That happened when she was nine years old and she began attending art classes. In those days, young girls were usually sent to study art so they could learn how to decorate their homes when they got married. 
Of course, Georgia had other ideas. She wanted to make art for herself, not for some future husband. Mm-hmm. Here you go. Georgia spent hours studying the fundamentals of drawing, endlessly copying cubes, squares, spheres out of an art instruction book. By practicing drawing geometric shapes, Georgia became so good at drawing that even her mother took notice. At last, she was better at something than Francis. Art gallery. Mom calling her Rembrandt, which is another famous artist from the Renaissance. Georgia's mother decided to send her daughter for private lessons given by a local painter named Sarah Mann. Every Saturday, Georgia made the seven-mile round-trip round buggy ride to Miss Mann's home in Sun Prairie. I love that they said buggy because I say that for anything on wheels. In these classes, Georgia was not asked to copy whatever images were put in front of her. Instead, she was allowed to choose what she wanted to draw. Some of Georgia's early works included an Arabian horse and a single red horse. By age 12, Georgia knew she wanted to be an artist. I decided that the only thing I could do that was nobody else's business was to paint, she once said. I could do as I chose because no one would care but her need for complete freedom would be tested at the next stop on her journey, the Sacred Heart Covenant School in Madison, Wisconsin. Ruh -ruh, Catholic school. It's tough there, y'all. Georgia enrolled at Sacred Heart at age 14, and the rules were stricter than anything she'd ever experienced. The nuns who ran the school controlled every aspect of the students' lives. Each girl was required to wear a black veil on Sundays. I just lost my place. A black veil to attend chapel every morning, and they all had to wear black on Sundays. The nuns could stop any student at any time to expect her mail or read what she was writing in her notebook. Keeping our eyes on you, young lady. Oof. Can you imagine that sort of... I was going to say big brother, but I guess it's like big mother oversight. Anyway, on Georgia's first day in the school's art studio, an instructor named Sister Angelique handed her a lump of charcoal and told her to draw a baby's hand. Well, that's a weird request. Georgia did the best she could, but her teacher did not approve of the results. It's a terrible subject matter. Draw a baby's hand? Anyway, it's so hideous. I can't even look at it. I will not cry. I will not cry. Other kids might have given up, but Georgia saw the criticism as a challenge. All right. She decided to do everything she could to meet and exceed Sister Angelique's tough standards. Her drawings became larger and larger. At the end of the school year, Georgia won two medals, one for improvement in illustration and drawing, and the other for deportment or good behavior. <laughs> it was Georgia's first good conduct prize, and it would be her last. She would return to her rebellious ways. Add a girl. The next year, Georgia and her family moved from Wisconsin to Williamsburg, Virginia. She enrolled at Chatham Episcopal Institute, an expensive boarding school that was very different from Sacred Heart. At Chatham, the teachers gave Georgia total freedom, although the other students uh, had trouble accepting her unconventional behavior. Some girls made fun of her Wisconsin accent and unusual clothes. Most of the girls wore ruffled dresses and put elaborate ribbons in their hair, but Georgia preferred drab, loose-fitting coats. She twisted her hair into one long braid that ran halfway down her back. Um, her appearance was unusual compared to that of her classmates, but Georgia didn't mind being different. She's so plain. Poor girl. I don't know what she was thinking. Fortunately, there was a bright spot at school, Georgia's art teacher. Elizabeth Willis recognized her new student's ability almost immediately. She provided Georgia with her own table in a private studio and allowed her to work at her own pace. When the other students complained that Georgia was being given special treatment, Miss Willis defended her decision. When the spirit moves Georgia, she can do more in a day than you can do in a week. <laughs> Ms. Willis taught Georgia to look at the natural world in exciting and unusual ways. She encouraged Georgia to hold wildflowers and examine the blooms from different angles. 
Then Georgia would try drawing the same flower over and over, sometimes showing only parts of the blossom or simplifying the shapes until they were barely recognizable. It was a technique she would use later, and more than 200 flower paintings she produced during her career as an artist. Some beautiful um, illustrated examples of what her close-up flower drawings are sort of like, but again, it's not her pictures, it's the illustrations by Duty Horner. Outside the classroom, Georgia was constantly playing practical, practical jokes and drawing characters of her teachers. Her penchant for defying authority started to win over the other students. She stayed out after curfew, teaching the other girls card games like, card games like poker. <laughs> oh, this is great. All right, ladies, what do we have? <laughs> With acceptance and popularity came opportunities. Soon, Georgia was named art editor of the school yearbook. When she graduated from Chatham in June 1905, Georgia's classmates wrote a poem about her and had it printed under her yearbook photo. A girl who would be different in habit, style, and dress. A girl who doesn't give a cent for men and boys, still less. O is for O'Keefe, an artist divine. Her paintings are perfect and her drawings are fine. Oh, what a sweet, sweet, sweet poem for her. Georgia O'Keeffe went on to enjoy a long career as an artist. Passing away in 1987 at the age of 98, she continued working right up until the end of her life and never compromised on her artistic vision. Though Georgia gave many interviews over the years and was asked many times to describe her special way of looking at the world, she preferred to let her work speak for itself. As she once explained, I found I could say things with color and shapes that I couldn't say any other way. Things I had no words for. Here we see an older Georgia Keith staring at um, one of her morning glory paintings, or is it a, the other kind? It's in that family, but uh, one of these paintings is, uh, I'm not sure my facts are a little funky here, but um, one of the most expensive paintings to sell at auction, um, one of that was done in this style. She had a few of that variety. Um, but anyway, that was a good story about George's childhood. I like learning about her rebellious tendencies and her uh, desire to not fit in and conform. She was her own person. Um, next time we get to learn, we're kind of going into a different section of the book. So it's about um, overcoming shyness, poverty, discrimination, and war. Um, so it's all about Overcoming Obstacles, our next chapter. And I'm so stupid. I did not even realize that these chunks of it were themed. So our first theme was all about the great outdoors. <laughs> that makes sense because they were all really into nature. And then the next is about overcoming obstacles. So um, I don't know if I'm going to read tomorrow. I might try to keep it like the weekend and just enjoy myself um, just to keep some normalcy. So if I feel moved, I may read tomorrow. If not, I'll be back on Monday starting this next section. Um, but it doesn't end without a lesson. My lesson uh, to inspire you guys um, for this chapter is uh, perhaps like George O'Keefe, you could find a flower in your house or in your yard if you have one um, or a plant, any kind of plant, and try drawing it super up close. You want to fill the paper so all four sides of the page should have something touching it. So if you're drawing a flower, those petals will run into the edges of the page. I'm going to flip to Georgia's real quick here. So these are some options. So that's kind of close up. That's getting closer. And that's super close. And actually that itself would be a really cool little project for you to do three panels. One far away, getting closer, and then super close. I would love to see that if you guys did that. Um, so I would, you know, it doesn't even have to be a flower. It could be anything like a, your favorite toy because, you know, she liked nature. So that was her inspiration. What's yours? Close, super close, zoom in close. I'd love to see that. All right. Um, all right. See you guys Monday, unless I feel so moved to do another one sooner and, uh, wish me luck on this door.